Why, hello there, everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Yon Zhong Nisho Do. Mina san. Konbawa. As the title says, today is pretty much a molt update, I guess. So, let us get straight into it. So, what you're seeing here is a mystery tarantula that I've gotten. And honestly, at first, I thought it was a Sarocosmia species, but as of now, after its post molt here, I'm not too sure what it is. Now I don't have any plans on breeding this little one here, and I don't know if it's a male or female yet because the molt is still too small for me to sex. As of now, this little one here is about a little over an inch in leg span. Now a lot of people have been sending me emails, pictures, and videos of what it could be, but honestly, at this point, it's anyone's call. And as stated before, this is a pet only for me. This one would not be a breeding project whatsoever, just a pet. But it does look gorgeous and it's still growing out its colors so let us see how it looks like once it's larger. Let us continue and allow me to update on Nemo here. So this is Nemo, our only surviving green bottle blue tarantula of the entire egg after the mob cannibalized her egg and yes this little one here has bolted. And honestly its colors are starting to show in. You can kind of see the green on its legs. And this little one here is approaching about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half in lifespan and it's still too small to sex but it's nice to see the colors coming in because it's showing that it's growing and I'm not really in a hurry to actually try to grow this one out because I really do enjoy this one as a pet and honestly, I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a bit tempted to keep this one as a pet only and not as a future breeding project but let us see, I really enjoy this little one here and I don't want to grow this one out too fast because I want to enjoy my time with this little one so let us see what happens and this tarantula here is my Brachypelma homori and this one molted out last week, so it is ready to feed after a post molt. So let us try to feed this a dubia. And honestly, a lot of people say that dubias are not the best for tarantulas because one, they play dead, and two, they tend to burrow. So it can become quite a hassle to actually use dubias as feeders at times, which you'll kind of see in this video here. So I do have colonies of dubia roaches, but I tend to only use them for adult females or sometimes really skinny tarantulas that could use a meal or two. But other than that, I prefer using red runner roaches, and I will actually make a video sometime the next few weeks, or maybe next week, on my feeders and my colonies that I use for my tarantulas. And I'll show them during my maintenance days on when I actually clean out the colonies and feed them, which is probably like once every week to once every two weeks. And I do spot clean about every single three days, and pretty much a thorough cleaning once every week. Now when it comes to my colonies, I like to keep it very simple, so it's not overly complicated. And uh, yeah, I will show that next week, which is honestly surprising because I didn't really think people would be interested in feeders, but uh, I guess it's something people want to see, so <laughs> I'll show you in the future. But coming back into this Brachypelma homori, it is nice to see this girl molting again because it's been a while since her last molt, so it's good to see. Now, allow me to show you one of my favorite tarantulas. My Crassicris species Guerrero. And this is a tarantula that is actually very uh, elusive or very rare in the United States hobby because I think I'm like the only person who has them now. But uh, I'm hoping that in the future somebody will actually import more from Europe. Now this specimen here actually molted about a week ago as well with the Brachypelma homori. So this little one here is ready to go. And this is a female. Now the last time you saw this specimen, it was in a video where I featured the species and it had a bit of a stuck shed on his abdomen. Now, as I stated before in that showcase video of the species, once it molts, it should be fine. And as you can see on his abdomen, the molt or the stuck shed from his previous other molt has officially come off. So now it's looking very clean and honestly, it looks great. Now, in terms of breeding projects, from what I could find, there has been none here in the United States. There has been at least one or two or maybe a few breeding projects up in Europe. One of them was actually successful, but I believe that was a couple to a few years ago. And as of now, I don't know exactly how many is out there in the hobby, but there's not a lot. And although I do have two specimens, both of them are female. So I have zero males. And honestly, I can't even find any more now. So this is kind of a dead-end breeding project, I guess. So as of now, I'm just really keeping these as pets. But I'm actually praying that maybe in the future, someday someone can actually import more from Europe or somebody can acquire more in the hobby. Because as of now, I can't find any. But if anybody knows anyone who's selling these, I would be interested for sure. This tarantula to me is very special. 
because not only is it rare and elusive here in the United States as a tarantula hobby, it's a very hardy and very enjoyable pet, but let us see what happens in the future. Who knows? Anything's possible in this hobby, right? So, let us jump into this molt here. So this right here is my Pamphobedius species Petersi or Petersi, also known as the Red Bloom Bird Eater. And honestly, this tarantula here has a lot of labels, so I'm just going to put a couple of them down here on this video. So let's get into it. So this is my Pamphobedius species Petersi, female, and she finally molted. She was in pre-molts for a while now, as stated before in a previous video, and it is good to see her molt because man, she is gorgeous. <laughs> I'm actually very happy that she molted, and the molt looks pretty good. She is a mature female, and I will measure this molt actually here in this video. Now if you're wondering how big the molt is, I will measure it here in this video, and it did measure out to be around 6 and a quarter inch in Lexman, so she's definitely a breedable female in terms of size, and her spermatheca is fully developed and scleroterized. As for my male, he's around 5 to maybe 5 and a half inches in Lexman, and I'm not sure if my male is penultimate or not. We just kind of had to wait and see on his next molt if he matures out to be a mature male or not. This species is pretty leggy, so I can see why some people think that my male is a, you know, penultimate. But if he matures out his next molt, I wouldn't be surprised as well. So either way, it's a win for me. Because as long as I have a male, that's a huge victory on my book. And for me personally, I just can't wrap my head around the idea of despising males. Because as a tarantula breeder, you'll come to the point of appreciating males because they're so hard to find. <laughs> Too hard to find nowadays. A lot of tarantula breeders and a lot of tarantula vendors, they tend to sell only unsexed or females, never males. Because everybody wants a long-lived big tarantula. But once you get into tarantula breeding, you will discover the wasteland of male tarantulas. How pretty much they're non-existent especially when it comes to rare or elusive species in the hobby. And I'm just praying that in the future, we will appreciate male tarantulas more frequently. And I really do wish that a lot of tarantula vendors and a lot of tarantula people who start selling tarantulas, I really wish they start selling males as well, because they're becoming more and more harder to find. But anyhow though, coming back into this video, this female's tarantula molt measured a little over 6 inches, approaching 6 and a quarter inch in leg span. But anyhow though, I think I'll wrap it up around here for today's Tuesday video. So, without further ado, as the typical, like, comment, and subscribe, and stay updated to whenever I upload here on the channel, new videos every single Tuesday and Friday. Also, follow me on my IG, and support me on Patreon. And with that, stay lax, and laxo out. From the Kumo Sensei.